what's going on in the home with our children. Yes. What is being to fix have families that need help. You know, the young parents, they don't know. Right. You know, I remember my brother, my mom came for him, you know, but he, like they call him the black sheep. She had, okay, certain age. He started young. Cigarettes. I just recently found out he was homeless for five years. You know, they get into the drugs and the alcohol because they can't deal with the situation. And yes, it's a mental issue. So we need this virtual. They need help. My sister came from Puerto Rico. My mother, you know, would not, they were not related to my mom. But she came and put for four kids, and she had to stay at woman's shelter. There's a lot of abuse and stuff going right. on. We need to work with the family. Right. And it's a shame because what I'm seeing in, in, uh, in a lot of the public schools are uh, teachers, guidance counselors, just be, becoming very... Are you right. Yeah, a lot of people are becoming very complacent in those positions, and you know they're seeing a child that that might be dealing with the situation, but they're so afraid to intervene and really tap the child and see what's going on, and they aren't doing that. So back to my point on you know narcotics, we need guidance counselors to actually see what's going on, talk to these kids, sort of get in their brain and see what's happening. Why are they so interested on drugs at such an early age? It, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm 27 years old. Ten years ago. I couldn't even think for a second about doing these drugs. I couldn't think about it. And today, parents aren't even catching up enough to put to their kids. 17 kids are dying. It's it's so far past what parents and, and, and teachers thought it was going to be, but we need that type of inter intervention program in schools. Why it's not there already, but what's going on, look, what's going on in Staten Island is ridiculous. You know, per capita, they have the most heroin deaths in the nation. It's yeah. unbelievable. This is in Staten Island. Staten Island. They don't this is right over our bridge. Yeah. They don't have a drug type program yeah. in school. They're, they're not getting it with it. They're not basically doing early intervention with kids. They're not, they're not teaching. They, they may teach a class about it, and I was taught uh, you know, about drugs too, but it's teach a class, move on, what's the next thing on the curriculum? Right. It's, it, it's guidance counselors having to talk to students and, and you know, finding out from other students what's going on. What's going on after hours? What's going on while these kids are home? What are they seeing? What are they hearing? And, and you know, it's very simple to do. In this day and age with social media, everyone right. kind of look on Joe Schmo's Facebook page right. or something and yeah. kind of peruse and see. Yeah. I mean, if it's public, it's public. And, and you see most of these kids, you know, they, they take these photographs where they're drinking or whatever they're doing right. and it's right there for everyone to see right. and you can see where they're heading towards or where they're already where they're headed. Exactly. Uh, just a couple, uh, what got you involved in politics and uh, I know you also started the uh, local Republican Club. Yeah, I started the uh, yeah, Graves and Bets and Republican Club. Uh, honestly, I, I got involved because I saw a demise in my neighborhood. I'm not, I'm not just saying that, it was an obvious demise. Um, is that where you originally from? I'm from Graveland. I was on the same block all 27 years of my life. Yeah. I saw an obvious demise in my neighborhood. A graffiti wasn't getting cleaned up. I saw uh, an influx of burglaries, robberies, um, stabbing, shootings, things that I, when I grew up I didn't remember hearing. So I really, I always like, wanted to get involved in this community stuff. I saw uh, the school I went to, I went to Catholic school, I like, one of the schools I went to closed. Like nothing, just everything about the neighborhood was just a slow downward spiral. And, and I got really sick of it. Like I said, everybody was running to Staten Island and Long Island, and I'm at a point now where I'm ready to, you know, to buy a home and start a family. And I don't, I don't want to run. I don't want to run away from, from where I grew up. I, I think I live in the, in the best neighborhood in the world, frankly. It made me who I am. Uh, made all my friends who they are. All my friends were very successful. Um, so I got involved in the in the Republican Party, and I, I did it through Marty Gold. And I said, Hey, I, I want to get involved. I don't really know how. He put me in the right direction. And I'll tell the story, it's pretty funny. I've always you know, hinted that I wanted to run for something, eventually I'll figure it out when, and they were like, hey, there's a council seat, there's nobody running, and we think you should do it. And at first, I was like, no, I, I, don't, I don't really think I'm ready. And then there was just like a slew of stories, it was like a perfect storm. Well, not really a perfect storm, but it was like just how it worked out. It was like a slew of stories that I heard. And it was all the letters I wrote to my councilmen, all the letters that I wrote to my assemblymen about the small things that we could fix to make the community better, and I wasn't getting any answers on it. I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. 
we don't really have much time left. I don't think I don't think this neighbor can wait another four years from what it's going through. All the money they threw at the Coney Island. Yeah. And the first thing I see about Coney Island a few weeks ago is on World Star Hip Hop and a brawl with like 30 people. Right. Oh, yeah. Why is this happening? And you know why? It's big. It was big. Yeah. yeah. And you know why it's happening? Because people are losing a lot of respect, or they've lost a lot of respect for the police. They look at the police as an enemy, someone who wants to stop them. Not someone who wants to help them, or somebody who's just keeping an eye on the neighborhood for, for civilians. Frankly, the police and the police are the thin blue line between civilians and some of the worst people you ever hear what they about. Sure. I think she's out of here now. It's not only like the drugs or mentally like you know along the whole thing. And right now, even though like this, like five, six years, when I come back home, I usually like when I go home, the neighbors like to go right straight. And now I can't. I have to make sure that the block, because yeah. the car is falling around. Yeah. So I can't even go look at my key and I open it. Then I make sure that even the bicycle, my illegal bicycle. Watching me, seriously, block to block, and sometimes he can't. He's not even riding the bicycle. He walk with the bicycle and make sure which house that I'm going. Right. So it might be happening right. every night, every time. So when I grew up, at 10 years old, I was able to go to my friend's house three blocks away, two blocks away. Now I, I have, a, I don't have any siblings, but I have a lot of little cousins. Now they can't play in front of their own houses. No. That's how dangerous the neighborhood has become. It's even very time, I can't even come out. Right. Not at all. Yeah. They're watching you, not even the car, with a bicycle. Yeah. Not even riding the bicycle. They just with a bicycle and watching you, where are you going? Right. Those illegal. Yeah. Illegal watching you, where you're entering. Oh, I like, pick it on the wall. Oh, that, yeah, that's another question. Another question, are you, are you prepared to, uh, if you had your say as a member of the city council, to rescind your status as a sanctuary city? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's no... It, it, when, when you see the news and you see people fighting and saying that we want to throw immigrants out of this country, it's like, no, you, you're missing the most important word. You're missing the word illegal. Right. They're here illegally. There's no vetting process. We don't know what they're about. When they're here illegally and they're hardworking people, hey, we are as happy for them as anyone. They've, they've conquered the American dream. It's what my, my family, I'm first generation. It's what my family came here and did. They came here legally. They, they built a, a good home. They purchased several homes in the community. They started businesses. That is that is the American dream. It's what everybody wants to achieve. So the fact that the mayor, and, and honestly, and I'll be the first one to say it, I don't care what anyone says, it's for voting reasons. He wants these people to vote. He, the more the more legals he gets in, the more the more he can deter them to vote for us. They want them to become yeah. Democrats right. so they can right. vote for them. All they want is vote for That is total mu uh, manipulation of our elections. And, and I'll tell you one thing. Country. Yeah. Yeah. On day one, if, if I am in the city council, and I, I don't think, well, I think Nicole Malley attack has had this. I just want to say that. I think she's the next, next mayor of New York City. But if Bill de Blasio is our mayor while I'm the city council, believe me, I'm a loud mouth. Every, every stereotype about Italians, <laughs> a little bit arrogant, rude, loudmouth, he sure will realize that that's who I am. And I'm a Brooklynite. Yeah. 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 Like, I'm sorry. Uh, did you ask a question? I know you, you Well, I wanted to make a comment. You sure. said you used the word respect about the police. Did you respect your father or did you fear your father or both? Both. Exactly. Both. So that's what's been lost. Yeah. The bad guys have to have something to think about. Yeah. In the boxing ring, you go into the ring, you don't respect your opponent. You wind up getting carried out of the structure. Yeah. And when the when when people that are up to no good feel like they don't have something to be worried about, that's when you have these problems. Right. That's when you have a person following her home to her house. They have to, you don't have to like the police, but you have to respect them and you have to fear them yeah. to a certain degree. It doesn't mean they should abuse people. You know, I'm not saying every one of them is a saint, but they are, they, they are in a tough position. Right. And, and, the fish and you have an influx, you have, that's right, and you have an influx of now of crime because you have, you've lost that sense of, oh, you know, that's a line we can't cross if we're up to no good. Right. And so it's a psychological game that's at play at first that leads to the problem. Right. If they don't have a psychological disadvantage, we, we the citizens, the uh, law body citizens, we're at a disadvantage. Sure. Because the bad guy doesn't have, there's not that, that level of 
a line that they can't cross. They must have that in the back of their mind. Right. That just psychologically, they, they could lose to the police, and right. probably will. Right. And when that's lost, we're all, we're all in a bad position. Absolutely. And that's what's being lost, because it's being bred by a culture of liberalism that's exciting that. That we're going to do what we want to do, and nobody's going to tell me I can't do it. You know, if I say that to my father, I'd get a left hand, I'd get a knuckle sandwich up the side sure. of my head, and I'm glad I did. Well, I mean, the fish takes it the head down, right? I mean, Mayor de Blasio has allowed this. He's, mm -hmm. he, he's put a target on the policeman's back, don't forget. And when Barack Obama was president, he did the same Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. And Eric Holder did the same thing. So that, that's where it stems Listen, from. Listen, I grew I was born in I was born in Graves. I grew up in Staten Island. And, you know, don't take this the wrong way, but, you know, New York City, I got to say, I don't have a lot of faith in it anymore. I'm a native New Yorker. I don't see how it, 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 it becomes something other than a liberal stronghold. Well, my campaign, like, my campaign slogan well, is, is "Working from the back," and that's what I said. Plan on doing. I don't see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I wanted to change topics slightly. You said you were from Gravesend. Yes. Uh, what do you know about the landmarking of the Lady Moody House and the, the City Landmarks Commission and what they've been doing lately? Because some sort of involved with the landmarking process. Uh, I'm not too in involved with that. Uh, I would like to be involved would, with that. It's would funny. you take the stand towards developers or towards? No, I would, no, absolutely not. What, Gravesend is what it is because of... Uh, okay, because yeah. in this city right now, apparently developers have free reign. Right. They are violating height restrictions, bulk restrictions, sure. and the city yeah. sort of has found ways around the zoning that people have fought to put in to protect their neighborhoods. Well, that's because that's because the because de Blasio got all the uh, yeah. from them. Yeah. It's so, well, it's that's, so that's, flavorful. Well, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, so you're saying the Lady Moody House is not landmark? It's not landmark. The Landmark me. Commission rejected it a number of times. The house has been there since what, the 1600s? Exactly. They, they rejected it on grounds that the house was modified, that there was no evidence that it actually was owned and occupied by Lady Moody. It's an old house, but that doesn't make it qualified to be a landmark in New York City. Developers want to buy these private one family houses and tear them down and build six story and eight story condos. Well, as, as you can see in the backyard here, we have parts of Brooklyn here. Oh. Uh, we have the, uh, see these gold columns here? That's from the old Lowy's 46th Street Theater yeah. on New Trick Avenue. And that was the on the grand banana staircase. Banana fish right. Banana Fish Gardens. It later became a uh, rock and roll place yeah, where the uh, a Grateful Dead played and all that. So uh, that's from there when they uh, it became a furniture place afterwards. And that's when they were about to gut it out, I went in there, I took a little tour, and I said, oh, Could I have this? Sure. Yeah, I'm going to go to landfill. So this, I remember my father in the 1930s said, Well, not that I remember him in the 1930s, I'm not that old. I didn't make the deal with the devil. <laughs> but uh, he said, um, As a kid, he used to go to that theater as a kid. And a lot of Brooklyn history is just going away. And you see these columns, that's from an old house down the block. These stained glass windows on the shed are from other houses around the area. Brooklyn, aren't you trying to preserve a building on Brooklyn Yes, I'm trying to save uh, the Roosevelt Hall at Brooklyn College. They, that's big they want to re knock it down and put a glass menagerie, and that's one of the original buildings that, of Brooklyn that, College. That's the classic library. Right, it has that nice, the dome and everything. Right. Yeah, of course. it has that uh, Georgian-style architecture, this is and they just want to gut everything. And we have to preserve history. I started a Facebook page called Memories of Old Brooklyn, New York, so we can remember what Brooklyn was and, and protect it also. I have so a it's a very important. I have a schematic of color-coded all the houses in Brooklyn with uh, like light blue bean and before 19, uh, 1800, so uh, it's all different uh, sections where I figure we should make a, a whole uh, panel of different houses that all the sponsors will check out the area and then get a better idea what we can do. Did you send that to me? You're on Facebook? Uh, yeah, I'm on Facebook. Yeah, DNA forward me to the uh, yes. plenum, sir. DNA info. I was, uh, I just want to make a comment to, to you. I was recently in, in Boston and uh, I spent the weekend there and I went through I did like a Freedom Trail. Yeah, I did a Duck Tour. I did a whole bunch of stuff. I know. I'm there yeah. every two years. It was great. Working, yeah. And what I appreciated most about the city is how much history they've actually preserved, and how much city there, you know, how much history there is in Great Britain. People don't really realize in that. In this yeah. city, the Landmarks Commission is interested in saving 1950s ultra modern glass boxes. That's what they're interested yeah. in. Yeah. 
In Manhattan, of course. Okay, I have a question. Um, the main point is not only that, you know, like, we have a lot of fun to get in Kings Highway. And even daytime, I can't even walk around if the man follow me. And nighttime, forget about it. Okay. So not only that, I see a lot of police supporting, protect, you know, victim, you know, protecting. There's a lot of police. Then they don't do anything. Right. So we should get rid of those police and right. whoever the police do the work and give them we need to support them, give them credit. It's a lot of it's a lot to do with no support the from the I city. see a lot of work the police they want to do the work. And there's a well, it's also the, uh, like you said, it rots from the fish head down with the mayor. They're always wrong in the eyes of the leadership. And, uh, and, uh, uh, a lot of the Dinkins, right. Dinkins the blue wall of silence. I, I gotta give, I gotta give credit to uh, Liam McCabe and uh, Father Michael Gelfond. The two of them went on a, a ride where they uh, reported and got pulled down like 11 or 12 of those massage parlors. Um, yeah, which is very important. And, and I think a few of them got closed down in yeah, Great too. Yeah, a few of them, they are. Which is a good stop. Hey, there's a police, the they want to do the work. There's a bad police, they yeah. like, you know, they don't want, they push them, so it's like, they have to shut them out. And because if they do something, it's the yeah. our police going to look back. Right. Well, two points I want to make. Us as civilians need to be involved in the community, too. We have and to, they don't. we have to give, but we have to be. And we have to give the assistance to the police to make them comfortable. Do their job. And that, that you me call the captain in the police, you file a complaint, yes. and nothing yes. happens. And I feel so bad that he works so hard. Well, and they, they don't there, there, there's a way you could be involved with the police uh, also. If you're 62 years and younger, you could be an auxiliary police officer, civilian police. I'm also an auxiliary police sergeant with the 66th Precinct for 22 years. And uh, you can get involved in that way if you're 62 and below. And that's one way of getting involved with people. I mean, you got paid for it or just a volunteer? No, I, I volunteer a lot. That's all I do is volunteer. I, I, so I need to get a you, second what job. What happened? You got accidentally, you what? know, and then, you know, from well, Now I have my real job at Brooklyn College as oh, a okay. peace officer. So that pays me. So if you see badges. something as an auxiliary police officer in the neighborhood that you think is like a, a red flag, yeah. then you can, like, interact yeah, and like get the police Yesterday I was involved. on patrol, and we're in a police van. As a killer on the side, but it's the same police van. And uh, we have a police radio. We actually, we were out with a police officer, our, our second coordinator. And uh, we are on patrol where the eyes and ears of the police department see something, we say something. And uh, when there's parades, where they help with crowd control and stuff like that. So, uh, like on September 11th, I was down there also. So, there's times where we're utilizing natural disasters and we're. Uh, uh, support system, basically. One way to get involved. Uh, second point. No, I said it. So we have to look out those that people really want to do the work, and they can do the work because of those who need to change leadership. Yeah, they lobby them, and they don't get a credit for it. I agree. Well, uh, we're just gonna. I guess we'll officially end the meeting since our uh, cameras are going down here. So, uh, everyone, just please give a round of applause to Ray. Thank you. And of course, if you, uh, if you have any other questions, we could uh, sure. definitely I want to make a quote for, yeah. uh, If you want more information about me, my website is bringbrooklynbat.com. Everything's spelled out completely. Uh, on Facebook, I'm at Denaro Ray, D E N A R O R A Y. That's me on Facebook. So I'm, I'm very, uh, very responsive on my Facebook and, uh, and my website. Are you running as the only person on the Republican line, or are you Republican. being challenged? No, who's your challenger? Uh, Mark Traeger. Oh. Yes. How long has he been uh, trying? Uh, this was his first time. Oh, well, his first time. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm hoping like you, you know, you will. And Take him out. Come in. Take him out. And so, I mean, I want you. Support police strongly. It's. It, I mean. Yeah. Before I've even thought about running for public office, I have had 100 percent support. support of the police. I have police some of my closest friends and family members. Accomplished. You know. Protect. Yeah. You know,